Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. My name is Luis Rosa, and I'm your host. Today, I would like to speak with you about the child tax credit for 2021. There are some major changes that are about to take place as a result of the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Some of you might already know that there typically is every year an existing child tax credit for $2,000 for children up to the age of 16, right? Under the age of 17, basically. Now, this year, 2021, the American Rescue Plan Act that came out as part of one of the stimulus plans enhances that credit to up to $3,600 for children younger than age six and $3,000 for those between ages six and 17. So it's a $1,000 to $1,600 increase um, depending on the child's age, which is great. You know, So I wanted to tell you um, who qualifies for it, how you can go about claiming this credit because there are some options uh, other than just waiting until tax season. And um, other things to look out for that you might be uh, benefiting from. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about who qualifies for the maximum credit. You know, the maximum credit it, it's going to be available to a lot of people. I mean, the IRS has uh, recently estimated that about 39 million households, which are about 65 million children, which is 88 percent or so of the children in the United States will qualify for this credit. So this is major. This is going to impact a very large percent of the population. Um, So I want to make sure that you understand exactly what you qualify for and how to obtain it. All right, so who qualifies for this credit? The full credit is available to married couples with children filing jointly if they have an adjusted gross income of less than $150,000 or $75,000 if you're an individual, single filer. If you are a head of household, then that is $112,500. Now, if you make above those amounts, it doesn't mean that you don't get it. You just get uh, a reduced amount up to a phase out. So for example, if you are a married couple filing jointly and you have adjusted gross income over one hundred and fifty, dollars you get a reduced amount. And then at $170,000, it reduces completely. If you are a single filer, $75,000 is the limit. Uh, for you to get the full amount, but if you make over seventy-five up to ninety-five thousand, then you get a reduced amount. After the ninety-five, then you don't get any more. However, um, one thing to keep in mind is that the two thousand dollar existing child tax credit is not going away. So, in essence, if you don't qualify for the enhanced one of three thousand or thirty-six hundred, you may still qualify for the two thousand dollar child tax credit that currently exists, and that is for children under the age of seventeen. For uh, people making two hundred thousand dollars annually or less, or four hundred thousand for married couples, so very likely, if you usually qualify for the two thousand, you'll still be able to do so. And depending on the child's age and your income, you might even qualify for the higher three thousand or thirty six hundred dollar one, which is great. Now, some things to keep in mind um, in terms of like who qualifies as a dependent is one thing you got to consider, right? So it's got to be uh, uh, somebody that lives with you for at least half of the year that has a valid social security number and that you provide more than half of their support, you know, but assuming that it's, they meet all that criteria, then they qualify as your dependent. And then you can claim the child tax credit for those kids. So what do you need to do to make sure that your family gets this payment? Well, typically these types of credits you claim on your tax return. Uh, whenever you file, you know, but as part of the American Rescue Plan Act, the government wants to help stimulate the economy further and are creating an option where you can get an advance on this money ahead of time. So in in instead of waiting to receive the money at tax time next time in 2022, when you file your 2021 tax return, you actually could get, in fact, a check every month starting July 15th all the way through December for half of the credit. So to give you an example, let's say if if you just have one child, for example, and let's say that child is under the age of six, 
you're going to, and you qualify, right? Let's say you're, you're under the income limit. That credit is worth $3,600. Now, what the government is doing is saying, look, you can take half of it right now uh, as monthly installments and half next year when you file your taxes. So for example, in this case, $3,600, you divide that by two, that's $1,800. And you're going to divide that evenly between July and December of 2021, which is six months. That means you would get a check of $300 a month for that child from July 15th all the way up to December 15th of 2021. And then when you file your taxes in 2022 for tax year 2021, you get to claim the additional $1,800 in your tax return. So this is great. You know, um, if you have two children and let's say they're both under six, then you get $600 a month and so on, right? If you have children over the age of six, then that's the equivalent of $250 a month instead because the credit is $3,000 instead of $3,600. So you have an option to choose. You know, if you don't do anything, you're just going to start getting the checks. Uh, the IRS right now estimates somewhere around July 15, they will notify you. So likely you're going to get a letter in the mail saying how much you might be eligible for and, and what to expect in terms of your monthly payment. Now, there is an option that the IRS will be rolling out a website, which they have yet to put together, where you can log in and update your information and also maybe even opt out of this program, which I'll get to in a bit as to why you may want to do that. But basically, right now, the payments are expected to be sent somewhere around July 15th, and they're going to be sent based on the information that is most recent with the IRS. So if you filed your 2020 taxes, they'll look at how many dependents you had in your 2020 taxes. If you qualify with that income, they'll do the calculation and then start sending you the checks. If you have yet to file your 2020, that's okay. You know, Maybe you filed an extension or didn't file for another reason. The IRS will then use the most recent um, 2019 return on file and then do the calculation based on that. However, they they are expected to roll out some websites. Uh, one is for people who normally don't file a tax return. So if you don't usually file a return, but you do have kids, then you still want to take advantage of this. So the IRS highly recommends that you go in, file a return, so that they have your most recent information on file, whether that's your address or your direct deposit, right? If you already filed 2019, 2020, the IRS, let's say you got your refund via direct deposit, the IRS is going to send you a check to your direct deposit. If you have changed your bank account information since you filed or you moved, you definitely want to update that information with the IRS and that portal will give you an opportunity to do that because otherwise you might get a check or a direct deposit sent to the wrong place. You want to make sure that you are on the lookout for that somewhere um, soon so that you can update your information. Now, if you don't do direct deposit, the IRS will just mail you a check to the most recent address on record. So you want to make sure you have that up to date. The uh, IRS may also even send you a debit card with, with the money in it as well. I've seen that happen too. So that could be, uh, you know, just be on the lookout because sometimes those things might look like spam mail. <laughs> I have heard of people who have even thrown them out because they just thought it was like some sort of junk mail. So be on the lookout for those. You might be getting either a debit card or a check if you don't have direct deposit. But the best way is for you to have your direct deposit information. So I mentioned about opting out, you know, one of the options that you have with the new portal once the IRS builds it is to opt out of not receiving these checks. Now, why would anybody in their right mind choose not to receive this payment? Well, there are some valid reasons. The fact is that the IRS is going to use the income based on either 2019 or 2020, whichever you have the most recent on file, right? Now, some people might have qualified for this higher amount based on their 2020 income or their 2019 because of the pandemic or anything like that. But maybe in 2021, they are going to, in fact, you know, maybe they're Maybe you're back to work and you're making as much money as you normally do, or maybe even more, and you wouldn't qualify for the additional child tax credit. If that's the case, what happens is next tax season, the IRS is going to reconcile what they sent you versus what you're entitled to. So if you made more money in 2021, and it turns out that you did not 
qualify for the child tax credit, but you did in fact receive the payments, as of now, the IRS is going to require that you pay that money back. You know, uh, there are some exceptions. Uh, I believe it's forty thousand. There's a safe harbor amount. Basically, if somebody makes forty thousand a single person and sixty thousand as a married couple, they don't have to worry about paying it back. But people above those thresholds will, in fact, have to make that reconciliation. So, if you are above those amounts, um, consider if anything has changed. You know, if you qualified on twenty twenty, but now you're back to work, you're making the money you normally do or more then you may not want to get this check because then it's just an advance on something that you have to pay back, right? So that's going to either reduce your tax rate for next year or make you owe more than you usually do. Um, it could also be a matter of personal preference as well. You know, some people just prefer to get a big lump sum tax return at the end of the, you know, during tax season as opposed to getting this monthly check. So if you're in that category and you say, you know what, I'd rather just let them keep it, I'll claim it at tax time, you know, that's fine. You know, some people might not be comfortable with that. They might just want to get their checks up front, right? But you have that option to log in and opt out. Uh, another reason, which is uh, something that should be considered is if your circumstances have changed, you know, I know people who are getting divorced this year, you know, and maybe they used to file a joint return and they had three kids, but now this year in 2021, they'll be divorced. So when they file their tax return next year, there will be a single return. Um, maybe, uh, you know, they don't know yet who's going to claim which kid or not, right? So in order to avoid getting extra money that you have to pay back in those situations, you, you're probably better off logging into the IRS portal and just opting out of receiving this check just so that you're not in a situation where you have to pay money back later. Um, another thing too that you could do in the portal is if, Maybe uh, you had a kid in 2021 that was not included in your 2020 tax return. If you want to go ahead and get that $3,600 credit, um, you can get half of it, right? The $1,800 for that child at $300 a month between July and December for this year, even though the kid has not uh, was not born yet in 2020 because it's a 2021 credit and you can get an advance on it. So if you had a new baby in 2021, when the IRS portals up, log in, let them know you have a new dependent. And if you want to get that monthly payment for that dependent, then you can do so. You know, So uh, various reasons why you want to log into that portal and either opt out for some reasons or update your information just to make sure that you're getting everything that you're entitled to. Uh, one of the things I'm going to put in the show notes is a, there's a calculator that Kiplinger's put together for you just determining how much of a credit you are entitled to and what the monthly payment and the amount that you can claim at tax time could be, which is a very useful calculator. So at least you have an idea, you can plan ahead. You know, um, one thing that I was thinking about in terms of the child tax credit is just figuring out as a planning opportunity, you know, what can you do with it, right? Uh, one thing to uh, consider before I get into that is also the fact that this child tax credit is what they call a refundable credit. Uh, when you get a credit from the IRS, some credits are considered refundable, some are not. And all that means is a refundable credit will uh, gets applied to reduce your tax liability, right? So if you owe money to the IRS, you can use that credit to offset what you owe. And if on top of that, you still are due money back, the refundable credit would actually be sent to you, the difference, right? A non-refundable credit would basically stop at your liability being zero, you know. So let's just say, for example, that you owed the IRS two thousand dollars, and then you get this thirty six hundred dollar credit. That credit would pay off the two thousand you owe, and you would still get the check for the sixteen hundred dollar difference. Now, a non refundable credit under that scenario, if you owed two thousand dollars and you had a credit of thirty six hundred that was not refundable it would just wipe out the two thousand dollars that you owed and you won't get any money right so a huge advantage of this child tax credit is that it's fully refundable so not only does it help you reduce your tax liability but you actually get the additional money back um now let's talk about some planning opportunities you know say you say you have two kids under the age of six now you're gonna get six hundred dollars a month from July to December, you know, and then you will get 
the difference that you can claim at tax time, right? Which would be another $3,600. So what should we do with that money, right? This creates an opportunity for you to plan ahead. You know, think about it this way. Uh, when you get a tax refund, um, credits aside, it typically you're giving the government a 0% interest loan if you want to look at it that way because they're, they're holding onto your money throughout the year and then you get it back at tax time, but you don't get any interest on that money, right? So some people are of the school that say, you know what, I would rather have my money up front and put it to work, whether it's paying off high interest credit card debt or investing it, right? Now, there could be a fine line because you don't want to play the game and end up uh, owing money if you take too little out from your paycheck. Uh, but normally, you know, as a financial planner, one of the things I talk about with my clients is if they're get if they're getting a huge tax refund at the end of the year, I usually have that conversation. So, look, you know, you typically get ten thousand dollars back a year. Maybe we can withhold a little less taxes during the year so that maybe you get a three thousand dollar refund, and, and the seven you can use that to fund a Roth IRA or something, right? Um, the limit is six on a Roth, but let's say somebody happens to be over the age of fifty. Or something like that. But I, these are the kinds of things we look at, right? So in this case, you know, if, if you're getting a decent refund and now you have that option of getting this advanced child tax credit, now you have a planning opportunity. If you have three kids, you know, it could be $900, $850, depending on their ages, right? What do we do with this money, right? So this year, overall, as a result of the pandemic, has resulted as well in a lot of opportunities for people. For example, I know people who, um, you know, had federal student loans and, and they have 0% on those student loans while they're deferred up until September of 2021. Well, you know, those payments are, as of now, are scheduled to resume at the end of the year. Hey, maybe we can take that child tax credit that's coming in and start sending it to the student loan payments, even though they're not due because... That's 0% right now. So why not pay them off as much as you can while they're zero? So that way, when the interest resumes, you have a lower principal balance, right? And obviously, you have to sit down with a financial plan and look at your overall situation. But I'm giving you some ideas, right? Or what if you have double-digit credit card debt? Maybe you can take this tax advance and start paying some of that credit card debt as opposed to waiting to getting a big refund at the end of the year. Or maybe this is a chance for you to start building your emergency savings. You know, if you don't have enough to fall back on, you can make believe this money isn't coming in and just put it right to your savings. Uh, this might be a great opportunity to start a college plan for your kids, for that very same kid you're getting the child tax credit for, right? Maybe uh, something you hadn't thought about yet or hadn't had the opportunity to do so. Well, now you can open up a college plan to start saving for that child. You know, so there's plenty of ways to do um planning, you know, you have an opportunity now where you'll get this money for six months that you normally wouldn't get, you know. So definitely um, talk to your financial planner to see how you can best take advantage of this money, figure out how much you qualify for, and then start thinking now, what can I do with this money to set myself up for a better financial future? So I wanted to give you a very quick recap. Uh, basically, the child tax credit is an enhanced option on the traditional $2,000 child tax credit. So now it is $3,600 for children under six. It is $3,000 for those between six and 17. You have an option of receiving half of that as a monthly payment between July 15th and December 15th of 2021. The IRS is working on a portal where you can log in and choose not to receive this credit if you so choose because of different reasons like a divorce, you're making more money and you don't want to have to pay it back later, et cetera. Um, and also you can update if you do have a new child that you want to start getting this advanced money for. So uh, phase outs are 150,000 for a married couple, 75,000 for single filers, 112,500 for heads of households. And if you don't qualify for the enhanced child tax credit, you may still be able to qualify for the traditional child tax credit, which is $2,000 per child under the age of 17 for those making $200,000 annually or less, or $400,000 or less for married couples. So hopefully you have some good information here to start doing some planning. And I hope that you take advantage of those extra dollars that you're getting ahead of time and make some great decisions 
and just set yourself up for a better financial future. As always, consult with a financial planner or your certified public accountant or tax professional to make sure that you're taking advantage of the tax code in your favor and also making sure that you're doing the things that are benefiting you the most and make sure you qualify. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at luis at onmywaytowealth.com and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at luis at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.